few interesting probab- probabilistic inequalities and how those are helping us in order to establish uh, learning theory or learning principle of theory i would like to say that so that machine can learn things okay so that uh, probabilistic theory uh, if you talk about uh, uh, contribution of probability in learning problem it is really everything if you try to see from that uh, learning problem everywhere probability probabilistic concept is coming so uh, during that process of uh, probabilistic inequality is playing very important role so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to discuss about uh, the previous uh, uh, class con- content that we could not cover in last class uh, regarding convolution of uh, uh, distribution in order to get the uh, Uh, distribution for derived distribution uh, as a linear transformation of two continuous random variable so i will establish in one slide after that we will discuss in detail about uh, three fundamental probabilistic inequality simplest one happens to be markov inequality then we will discuss about chebyshev inequality then we will discuss about uh, uh, chernoff inequality all these three are fundamental so all these are linked to each, each other so we will see that linking and uh, what is happening that among the marco chebyshev and chernoff uh, chernoff is having more computational power and later we will see that chernoff further can be uh, converted into a more computational power that we are calling it hopkin inequality so hopkin inequality inequality is really important uh, you can say that hopkin it is directly coming from chernoff itself and uh, thanks to hopkin hopkin's lemma and uh, further results and the hopkin inequality it is playing very important role in learning that also we will see it here so i have already it is what to be say that when we are having so all these inequalities are developing a uh, error bound error bound for probability okay error bound generally we come up with error bound so uh, what is happening that uh, what kind of bound simply you can say that uh, probabilistic bound what we say that and uh, if you restate or rephrase that it will be uh, what it will play very important role in learning theory or in what we call it sample complexity so sample so what would be the resulting number of training example or t- what would be the result uh, sample size so that we can get uh, approximately a, a good uh, outcome so that uh, it is all those sample the sample complexity is very much important in learning problem so those things will be provided by hopkin inequality and there are uh, other there are various variant of hopkin inequality you will see it so it is just a very interesting concept in learning theory you will see so coming to that uh, first segment as a recap of last class that in last class we were discussing about convolution of uh, continuous signal simply simple simply signal it would be what uh, uh distribution also we can say that so we are having situation like this way uh, suppose x and y happens to be two continuous uh, uh, and independent random variables then our that means we know the distribution of x also we know the distribution of y now we come up with a new uh, function z happens to be sum of x and y that means z equal to x plus y and uh, what is happening that in that process simply we can say that z is a derived random variable has been generated from x and y by summing it so uh, we have to find the derived distribution of z what does it mean so we can find derived distribution of z and once we will have explicit form of derived distribution of z it would be actually convolution of uh, distribution of x and y so discrete convolution we had already seen in the case of discrete uh, random variables and now here we will see continuous uh, uh, convolution so situation is like that uh, uh, here we are willing to find uh, Uh, distribution of z so that would be f of z we don't know but from the principle of uh, uh, commutative distribution function we know that uh, the density happens to be derivative of the uh, commutative distribution function so simply this one is what it is talking about uh, probability of to z uh, a small z it is talking about what it is uh, uh, commutative distribution function so we try to play with this uh, commutative distribution function smartly before differentiating it because we we haven't computed this one we have to compute with respect to density of x and y so just just uh, proceed with uh, this one and leave it this uh, different derivative operator operator as it is we will apply it at the final juncture okay 
so here uh, we know that uh, this uh, property that uh, here z is happens to be sum of x and y so that's why we, we are replacing z random variable z by x plus y okay now, now we will try to see it what does it talk about it is just talking about joint uh, occurrence of uh, x and y uh, under this condition yes I will answer it. Let me complete this lecture uh, that uh, you can ask at the end of uh, lecture. Okay. Okay. So here uh, probability is coming like this way. So focus on that. Here uh, we are computing joint probability of x and y under this rule. So you can say that it is very much a specific rule. So always geometrically visualize this rule. So what does it talk about? It is talking. It is saying that uh, capital X. It is talking about. Uh, uh, variable and happens to be random variable and capital Y is also variable happens to be random variable and if you uh, take two variable and uh, if you are taking this, this equality then it is defining a half a space so simply this would be a line or hyperplane in R2 uh, whose equation is given by x plus y equal to a small z a small z is just an observation so you might be focused so this is the desired half a space where we are willing to compute the joint probability of x and y under this view. so here we are willing to calculate joint probability of x and y okay so everything geometrically is clear so now in order to compute joint probability how we compute that means we need to integrate the joint distribution of x and y uh, over this region and easily we can compute joint distribution, distribution x and y how because x and y happens to be independent so this joint distribution of x and y would be just product of individual distribution of x y so there is no any issue but right now i am not uh, factoring it okay so just uh, put it as as it is so here see that uh, which uh, uh, integrating element is coming first so first dy is coming here you can say that after dx is coming so here every everyone might be aware of that in last class i had already said that uh, mentioned that here if you try to see the variation of y it vary from minus infinity to up to uh, z minus x up to z minus so here definitely along vertical line x would be always fixed so that's why z minus x is coming if you, so if this vertical line will cut uh, at certain x so, so you can say that that term x would be fixed and hence this point would be what it would be outgoing arrow it will go from here y would be equal to z minus that comes and go so, so that's the upper limit uh, with respect to integrating element y it would be z minus x now it is very much fine but here one derivative operator is, is there so that's where this function is uh, it is very much continuous function, density function, joint density function. So what we do, we play with the uh, order of integration. That means we try to change this, uh, these two integrating element. So whether uh, it is not always uh, blindly we can change uh, uh, dx with dy or dy with dx. Interchangeable directly not possible. It is based on Fabni approach. Okay. So what we do, uh, so prior to change this one, we will apply here change of. Uh, substitution principle so here uh, substitution principle uh, what would be that so apply a new variable t that would be equal to y plus x because here at uh, this upper limit we don't want complicated uh, structure so we try to simplify it so if you are applying this variable so due to that what is happening uh, here limit will be now minus infinity to to infinity and t is here dummy variable so itself here from here you can apply it further that y would be uh, t minus x t minus x would be here so here we are writing it t minus x and uh, dt would be equal to dy so here d here you can say that it is t minus x into uh, here dy integrating element would be dy and dt simply you can say that but t is a dummy variable so you can replace it further with y and when t g when y equal to in minus infinity t would be also equal to minus infinity okay when y equal to z minus x t would be z so that substitution process very simple so we got very uh, little bit simpler form than this one now further we focus on uh, here uh, in order to utilize this derivative concept okay concept so what we do here we apply 
change of order of integration this one is very important change of order of integration order of integration this one is very there is a book on uh, calculus thomas and finney uh, written by thomas and finney so you can uh, see a lot if you are try to recall it through change of or, uh, order of integration we can interchange this one uh, interchange the limit okay so after interchanging we are getting this situation this is the situation what we are getting oh, okay so here uh, simply just uh, you can here varying y from minus infinity to infinity afterward definitely x would remain here inside that so after that we control through <laughs> we control x in order to remain in this uh, region only integrate integrate integration would remain over this region only so here uh, here we we are controlling inside variable y but if you see in this integral due to change of order integration we are not controlling y first we let it integrate y exhaustively completely from minus infinity to infinity but we are uh, x it remains there so we are controlling y and x, x we are controlling so that's why we are getting this change uh, order of integration okay so here uh, once you come here so what is why we are we have taken this uh, because you can see that your limit uh, is variable in nature it is not fixed quantity and there is a leibniz rule you can uh, recall Le 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 leibniz rule uh, leibniz rule is meant for differentiation of integration when uh, that limit are variable in nature so differentiation uh, of integration so that's where through that leibniz rule if you integrate then you will get this pattern it is very simple leibniz rule is, that one is very simple simple and even plus 2 in plus 2 you, you might have already gone through so this would be exhausted only you will have uh, integration of joint distribution function uh, from minus in to infinity so if you see this one so till now we can't call it it is a convolution but just we got this picture now we will take benefit of being independent nature of x and y so due to independent nature we can by factor this joint distribution into two uh, product of two distribution so see uh, why because x and y happen to be independent to each other so due to that uh, if you are factoring it like this you can factor it like this way density of x into density of y but remember remember that this this is y uh, here. okay this is y so here we have factored it what does it talk about we call this one is the convolution of two continuous series this representation it is talking about convolution of two continuous signal okay so we have already seen that if you are having two random variable happens to be continuous and independent then we can find distribution of uh, uh, sum of two random variable x plus y using convolution so you can generalize this convolution principle further okay now i will take x one uh, two simplest example very simple and uh, it is all about uh, computing formulation so that's where job would be very simple you had already seen that so we are taking uh, two distribution two random variable x and y both are exponential in nature and independent and having the same parameter lambda okay now after that we are defining a new random variable uh, z as a sum of x plus y then if you are willing to find distribution of z then using this formulation approach you will see that distribution of z is actually gamma distribution you will see that it would be a gamma distribution likewise if you take uh, any two continuous uh, random variable x and y with different uh, mean and variance so x is having mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square and y is having mean mu2 and variance sigma2 square and also we consider that these two norm uh, gaussian distribution are independent to each other then if you define new random variable z as a sum of x and y then you will see that uh, z is having a distribution where it is again a normal distribution but you have to find what is the distribution of that so distribution it, it would be a normal distribution with mean mu1 plus mu2 and variance sigma1 square plus sigma2 square so that you have to establish so how we can establish it is very simple to establish that we just we need to find derived distribution uh, through convolution effort. it is directly coming with Back to convolution approach convolution of uh, distribution of uh, x and distribution of y just convolve it all these are involved in exponential so it is very easy to deal with exponential and just simplify it after simplification you will see 
this Gaussian distribution you are getting it. So it is just outcome of uh, uh, this convolution approach. Okay, we can easily find. So with the help of convolution, we can find distribution of sum of two independent random variable, continuous random variable. Yeah. Whether it is continuous discrete through convolution, we can find distribution of that. So that is the interesting uh, way to derive distribution with the help of convolution approach. Other approaches are there also as well, but this looks much simpler. Convolution looks much simpler. Now we are coming to next part of today's lecture that we will discuss about three fundamental uh, probabilistic inequalities which would be needed in order to establish large sample size. So uh, I will discuss all these three in a single slide. After that, we will discuss further application of that. So three fundamental inequalities those are coming. First one is Markov. Second one is one is Chebyshev and third one is Chernow. So all these three are interrelated, interrelated to each other. So that means uh, you can say that if you know Markov, easily you can derive Chebyshev. If you know Chebyshev, easily you can derive Chernow. So all the that's why Markov implies Chebyshev, Chebyshev implies Chernow. So that sequence is going on. So it, just I will talk about proof of Markov. It is very simple to establish proof of Markov inequality, and easily you can see. Uh, from there, uh, Chebyshev inequality and Chernoff inequality. Then let us see what is Markov inequality. So Markov inequality is saying that if uh, have, we are having a random variable x and which is observing just uh, non-negative numbers, real numbers, which is observing non-negative is halo only. So uh, always it will be. So by default, if you I am asking what would be the expectation of this one, the, the expectation would be also non-negative. It would be some positive quantity because x is observing non-negative non value only. Okay. Then, then what is happening that we try to find probability of tail. So, so we you had already seen few random variable con uh, continuous or discrete random variable which are observing only non-negative value. So one of them you might have already seen exponential random variable. So exponential random variable is observing value like this way. Okay. Uh, so it is observing only non-negative value. So such kind of example is there. And also if you counting principle is there, the counting always start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things. So like uh, what you call it, uh, uh, binomial kind of things and some other uh, counting principle which is associated with uh, uh, what we call it, uh, there is one more uh, distribution in discrete that uh, uh, Poisson distribution, that one is also counting and geometric, uh, geometric uh, uh, random variable that one is all those are observing just non negative value so there you can say that uh, we are defining Markov inequality only for those kind of random variable which are observing only uh, non negative value okay so for that we we can uh, compute probability of uh, tail so pro probability of tail means probability of right tail there is no meaning of talking about left tail because it is observing just non-negative value so there is no symmetricity so we don't have to focus on uh, left tail just we need to focus on right tail so distribution die down uh, decay down or decay down to zero as uh, we observe further value okay so that's why we we are looking for uh, right, what is the right tail probability at uh, what would be that so there is a single tail that happens to be right tail so we can estimate the probability of right tail how we can estimate through Markov inequality. That estimate will be Markov inequality. So estimate is coming like this way. So if you are having a, a random variable x which is observing only non-negative value, so we can uh, estimate the uh, right tail probability by the ratio of expectation of x and t that uh, bound what we are getting. So that means situation is coming like this way. So here. Uh, 0 is here somewhere, x is observing value, uh, uh, right of 0, so after uh, we, we are willing to compute probability that x is observing after t, okay, after t, that means x is greater than or equal to t, so what is the probability of this one, this event, okay, so uh, we, if you are willing to compute this probability, then you need to know distribution, but you don't know distribution. So if you don't know distribution, you don't have, because in machine learning generally you are having data, machine learning problem generally you are having data and you don't know from which distribution that data has been generated. So simply you don't know the distribution. So if someone is asking what is the probability of a right tail, so you can't answer it directly. So, but one thing you can do, you can estimate uh, expectation of the uh, 
aspect corresponding unknown distribution by using that sample or by few training example you can estimate the uh, mean or expectation of that distribution so that uh, so that's where this quantity can be estim estimated okay so that's where uh, this marker probability uh, singularity is playing very important role when distribution is unknown so here we see that right tail, right tail probability is bounded above by uh, ratio of expectation of x and t t this one is uh, you know it, it would be your choice what t you want uh, in order to compute the right tail probability okay and expectation this one is also possible to estimate from few observation of the value of x so through that uh, you can estimate it uh, so you can say that one estimated value you can take it so that's where you can say that you are getting a bound upper bound of right tail probability so here this bound is definitely not a very good bound is a loose bound you can say that but you need to know how we can get this infinity so the, if you are talking about derivation derivation is very simple so why because just uh, define this right tail probability and how we define right tail probability that uh, we define it from the perspective of uh, integral suppose it is continuous in nature so that means we are integrating the corresponding density function uh, t onward so we are integrating t to infinity positive infinity the corresponding density function here you don't need to know uh, need need to know this uh, density function just uh, proceed like this way and what will happen that uh, here uh, take uh, divide and multiply the uh, here with this uh, right hand side so if you divide and multiply then you will see this is situation 1 by t times and t is here behaving like a constant so you t you can take inside the integral there would be no any issue ok so t times f of x dx and remember that here uh, this t would be always non-negative so there is no any issue ok so further what we do here we know that uh, uh, all these quantity are non-negative distribution always happens to be non-negative t is also non-negative because of we are taking x is uh, because of assumption over x okay so here this quantity usually we can say that this quantity would be less than or equal to 1 by t times integral from t to x time f of x dx we know that this x would be uh, it is coming within integral so by default this x would be less than equal greater than equal to t so that's where this integrity is favored okay and further this quantity would be less than equal to you can take it uh, uh, from minus infinity to infinity in order to convert this right hand term in form of expectation but we know that x is not observing value below zero so there is no meaning so for uh, the, for the perspective of definition of expectation you can put it there is no issue so you can write it uh, uh, in this right hand side of what it like integral from minus infinity to infinity x times that means what does it talk about it is actually expectation so this one is the expectation so easily we got the derivation of uh, so simply you can say that this quantity is what it is this quantity is expectation of x and in denominator we observe t so easily we got the proof of marco inequality very simple to get it uh, from the concept here we can easily find this uh, uh, loose bond we can say that it is a loose bond now we will see another uh, inequality uh, that one is jbc inequality which is actually uh, based on uh, work implied from marco inequality but here remember that uh, uh, there is a beauty with Chebyshev inequality. It is not uh, like that X would observe only uh, non-negative value. Here X can observe any value. So X is any random variable. Suppose we are taking X is any kind of ra uh, random variable. In that case, uh, how we can estimate uh, the tail probability? So if X is any random variable, 
then x may observe negative positive whatever will be possible okay so you can uh, there is no such uh, this kind of uh, specification what we mark we had already seen that but one more condition is that x must have a finite variance so that condition we are putting it only this assumption we are putting it under this assumption we can estimate the probability of uh, uh, right tail and left tail both so probability of this one we are saying that probability of uh, right tail this one is saying that probability of left tail uh, or what we say that uh, uh, directly in place of talking probability of uh, right tail and le left tail we are talking about probability of right tail of centered random variable so x is a random given random variable and we are somehow we can uh, compute or estimate the expectation of x so in that's where we can get a new random variable that we, we can call it it is centered random variable why because this new random variable x uh, random for this random variable x minus expectation of x uh, expectation would be zero so that's where we are talking about the, this centered random variable so it, it would have expectation zero it is so we don't need to compute expectation this deviated random variable will have expectation zero so that's why we are talking about the right tail probability of this centered uh, random variable you can call it y for the sake of simplicity so we are willing to compute right tail probability of y and also left tail probability of. so this one is left tail so here it is centered about this uh, y is centered about uh, zero okay so we can talk about uh, this one is right tail probability so this event we are saying that y is greater than t and left tail probability will, it will come so somewhere it would be minus t left of uh, uh, zero and in this event we will talk it y is less than minus t uh, in order to compute right left tail probability so that situation is coming we are willing to compute so if you are willing to write these two things in combined then you can say that modulus of this centered random variable would be greater than or equal to 2 so if you try to solve it this equality implies these two okay so we are writing in unified form so uh, now one more property we know that uh, uh, modulus uh, is having very interesting property that if you aspire modulus of any quantity that would be equal to a square of that quantity so just we are taking benefit of that property from math one usually you can say that so here this property would be equal to this one okay this property that means a square of a uh, modulus of this centered random variable would be greater than a t square so and and hence it would be just uh, what it would be just equal to x minus a square of x minus uh, simply you can replace it, uh, it like this way here it would be uh, just uh, a square of x minus expectation of x is greater than equal to t is but this quantity we are keeping okay you can name this uh, random variable it is a derived random variable happens to be function of uh, x so you can call it again y okay for sake of simplicity so you can say that uh, this right tail probability uh, it is just uh, equivalent to say that y is greater than t square t quantity and here over this apply here we can easily say that uh, y is what a square of this one so this uh, y would absorb absorb one observe only non negative value so easily we can apply uh, markov property over here in order to estimate right tail probability so under the principle of markov probability it will say that uh, this uh, right tail probability it would be bounded above by uh, expectation of y divided by this t square this quantity so it is just uh, coming from marco property marco infinity what we call it marco infinity coming from marco infinity so here uh, just sub substitute back y equal to uh, a square of x minus expectation of x so that we are substituting it and t square as it is as it is it could be there and from the principal definition of variance what what does it talk about actually this one is the variance of the random variable x so we got a very uh, better bond this this one is a better bond than this one this one is bond okay so we observe we are here one, one more thing x might be any random variable so we got another bond that this right uh, this uh, uh, right tail or left tail probability 
it would be bounded about by ratio of areas and c square this uh, we are calling it Cavitian inequality it is directly borrowed from Markov inequality but remain, remain just see that here x may be any random variable now we will talk about another important inequality that one is also borrowed from uh, Markov inequality and that we are calling it Chernoff inequality and it is more practical how here again in case of Chernoff inequality we can take any random variable there is no any issue okay so if you are taking any random variable so how we can um, find chair chain of inequality so our intention is that uh, again we have to proceed with uh, centered uh, random variable in that case the mean or expectation would be zero for this center random variable so that's why we are proceeding with that okay so we don't need to compute that expectation so here again here situation is like that x your uh, y is uh, centered about zero so we are willing to find so here x is any random variable so y would be a random variable uh, which may take negative and positive value so that's why we are willing to find both uh, uh, tail probability right tail and left tail probability okay uh, so here minus two so we want to compute uh, in probability of uh, this event and left y is less than minus t and probability of this event y is greater than minus t okay so that is these two quantity okay so we, we want to compute probability of these two quantities so what is happening that in in order to compute this probability we will uh, raise it to exponential power in order to relate it with the uh, moment genetic function so there is a moment genetic function somehow i, I might have explained so here uh, moment genetic function it is happening so if you are having a random variable then you can define a new random variable it is the power s times x and find the expectation of this one exponential of s times x so this we are calling it moment generating function of the random variable in suffix right x or uh, it happens to be function of s okay so this we are calling it moment generative function x uh, expectation of uh, it is the power s times x okay so here uh, you can uh, compute various moment of the random variable x that first moment happens to be expectation second moment ha happens to be second moment and first moment in combined they are giving result of uh, variance and various moment you can uh, cut to this and other things would come you can compute all those things okay so this uh, this we are calling it moment genetic function that's why here uh, if and there is a situation that uh, this probability would be equal to uh, the probability with respect to this exponentially raised uh, random variable uh, or with respect to moment genetic function what we call it okay we will see the moment genetic situation here how so here simply apply so we are we are having this uh, derived random variable is greater than or equal to this quantity okay and just apply marco inequality what does marco inequality say that it say that uh, this quantity under the marco inequality this right tail probability would be uh, you can call uh, this new uh, random variable as y you can say that so you can say that uh, this uh, right tail probability would be uh, less than equal to less than equal to expectation of y divided by this quantity e to the power s t but what is y y is e to the power s time x minus expect expectation of x so you can write it and we know that e to the power s t it will go up and then it becomes yes, negative with negative exponent it is about minus s t okay we can take it up and here into expectation of what is y here y is exponential of s time x minus expectation of x okay so here you can say that it is talking about uh, here this uh, probability further we can improve we have improved that this uh, right tail probability or left tail probability has been bounded above by uh, exponential time this one uh, 
uh, expectation of moment genetic function so it is moment genetic function of uh, what uh, this uh, center random variable is coming so in order to compute moment genetic function you need to know distribution but don't worry uh, we always don't need to know distribution we can always uh, find uh, upper bound of that uh, moment genetic function so that i, I have taken a few example as well so i will explain that as well so uh, here what is happening that uh, this is giving upper bound so you can say that from math principle so this one is upper bound of this right tail or left tail probability so what is it it is upper bound so among the upper bound we will look for least upper bound so how we can get least upper bound that would be that would be the best bound for this right tail or left tail probability by finding the up among the various so this one just an upper bound so among the upper bound how we can find uh, best upper bound anyone would like to suggest how we can find the best upper bound so this one is the upper bound you can say that so among the upper bound how we can find best upper bound anyone it is just uh, math one result uh, result anyone would like to suggest how we can find uh, best upper bound among the various upper bound anyone are you listening me or not it is very simple what is meaning of uh, that math one that you had taken if you are unable to answer i i hope that you should answer that how you can find the best upper bound among all those uh, upper bound there are various upper bound anyone no answer okay fine then what i have to say you forget everything you are have sort some memory what i have to say forget so here just minimize this one minimize among the upper bound minimize with respect to s s is the variable so with respect to s each s you are getting an upper bound for this right tail or left tail probability so what you have to do with respect to s we are getting so s is uh, we have defined in here a, a moment genetic function with respect to x x s okay so we will minimize this upper bound with respect to s in order to get best upper bound that means the least upper bound so this is the best bound of uh, this uh, right tail probability or left or left tail probability so easily we can say that chernoff inequality is giving better bound or better than these two better than these, these two so that's why chernoff inequality is really interesting in learning problem that we will see it here uh, few, in, during few example so now let us discuss uh, few thing about uh, uh, more genetic function then i will talk about chernoff bound few pr practical chernoff bound so and uh, various other result okay so let us discuss about moment genetic function and it's a exponential bound so exponential bound is giving freedom uh, that we don't need to know uh, distribution of the random variable always it is not possible not uh, uh, always proceed with the uh, distribution of uh, the given random variable so here moment genetic function it has to find exponential bound on the probability okay that exponential term we had already seen that and uh, of a random variable with finite variance that variance must be finite and it will exceed its expectation by some quantity that we will see okay so we have a very convenient bound of the form like this way so if you are taking a moment genetic function of for any random variable so we define as expectation of exponential uh, of s times s okay Then this quantity would be always upper bounded by by <coughs> exponential of c squared times s squared divided by two. So that's why I was saying that a moment genetic function is always bounded above by this exponential function. So here, uh, if uh, distribution is given to us, we will calculate uh, moment genetic function. If it is not given, no worry, we can proceed with this upper bound. So, so we can proceed with this one. And if someone is asking, then if we are, we are willing to proceed with this one, what would be c square? Yeah, definitely this c square. That means this constant c it depends on distribution of uh, the random variable x. But no worry, it is very much related to variance. So here, if you are having a random variable x, uh, we don't know distribution of x. There is no any issue. <coughs> what we do? In order to come come up with c square, c square, first we need to estimate. 
एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एक्स बाय ऑब्जर्विंग फ्यू वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स एंड आल्सो वी कैन एस्टीमेट वेरिएंस ऑफ एक्स we can estimate variance of x so we can estimate expectation of x we can estimate variance of x from few observation of x so that's way no worry we can estimate all these things in the upper bound we can estimate okay there would be no any issue so we can it is possible to find practical uh, uh, approximated upper bound for the moment genetic function so so it would be easy to find chernoff inequality so for example if you are taking a gaussian distribution with zero mean and variance is sigma square then how, what would be the moment genetic function so here moment genetic function it would be uh, exponential of uh, sigma square s square by 2 so you can say that with respect to exponential we are getting loose bound for moment genetic function loose bound that means equality situation is coming otherwise uh, if you are taking sub gaussian then this uh, moment genetic function it would be less than this point it okay less than so this one is loose bound so you can't so you itself got uh, the loose bound of uh, moment genetic function in term of exponential with respect to exponential random variable if you deal with other random variable those would have bound less than equal to this one sub gaussian generally sub gaussian in nature i will talk about sub gaussian would have less than uh, this quantity so no worry we can proceed with this uh, in order to compute uh, chernoff inequality okay so if it is we are, we are willing to take another uh, uh, random variable so anyhow only thing here, here is that in order to go find the bound of uh, uh, moment genetic function you need to know variance what is the variance and also you need to know what is the mean as well sometimes you also that one is also essential to know mean because mean by default we have taken it zero so that's where there is no uh, any issue here right now otherwise uh, if mean is non zero you need to compute you need to uh, otherwise you need to estimate it if distribution is unknown you need to estimate it. so we are taking another random variable that we call it red mature distribution that means it is one kind of bernoulli random variable that means that random variable is taking will one with probability 0.5 and minus one with probability 0.5 okay so this one is one kind of bernoulli random variable what we say so if you we are willing to find what is the uh, moment genetic function for this uh, red mature distribution random variable uh, it would be bounded above so you can say that it would be bounded above by exponential of uh, sigma squared times s square divided by 2 but we know this red mature distribution is having uh, this is the probability distribution so easily uh, we can say that variance of uh, this random variable it would be 1 so in place of sigma square we got 1 so we got upper bound there is no any so you so you can see that uh, we we are here we don't need to know explicit form of the uh, moment genetic function just we can proceed with uh, exponential bound of the moment genetic function it would be easy to find chernoff inequality so we are going to discuss about one example in order to understand chernoff inequality in detail uh, in collaboration with moment genetic function okay so here overall you don't need to know uh, explicit form of moment genetic function if it is there no worry you can come uh, you just compute it if it is not the distribution is not there then you need to uh, you need to proceed with exponential bound of the moment genetic function So consider a sum of ID random signs. Random signs that means either it is plus one or minus one with certain probability. So last example, red mature uh, random variable what we had taken. So that you can say that one example of random sign. So now what you do? You sum n number of those ID. Indi I I means first I means independent. Uh, uh, second I means identically and B means distributed. Independent and identically distributed random signs we are seeing. Okay, so each uh, SI happens to be independent to each other. Okay, so if you take n two random signs happens to be independent to each other, and uh, all those are having same distribution. I identically distributed means having same distribution. That is the meaning of uh, here ID. Okay, so we are defining Z as a sum of SIs n number of SI where SI may take uh, uh, either minus one or plus one. It is a random sign. So if you are willing to find expectation of z, it will be zero. Easily we can say that why? Because expectation of each SI happens to be zero. Uh, one it is with respect to probability point five minus one with respect to probability point five. So if you are willing to compute uh, expectation of any SI, it would be equal to zero. And and hence it will give over SI of the over all uh, 
expectation of this sum that could be also zero so that we can compute it uh, from this scenario so now we are looking for chernoff uh, bound for uh, right tail probability right tail probability of this sum okay so here we know that uh, uh, from the chernoff uh, bound we had already seen that this is bounded above by it is power minus st times uh, this moment generated function so uh, here what we observe that z is at least sum of si means si happens to be independent so uh, you can say that uh, this quantity uh, here you can focus on this quantity can be written as uh, each si happen to id so that's why uh, this quantity is equal to uh, product of uh, e to the power s times s1 n times all are I, I, id that's why each uh, exponential uh, would be same so that's why uh, this term is coming and further if you try to talk about we had already seen that uh, uh, <coughs> this one s1 is what it is one kind of red mature uh, random variable and if you talk about uh, bound of uh, this moment generating function it was bounded by exponential of uh, uh, variance squared times uh, s squared uh, by 2 and variance is equal to 1 for each age, si variance is equal to 1 so it would be just equal to s square okay divide by 10 but how many times it is coming n times n it is coming as a product so that's where n will go inside the exponential and we are having upper bound for this sum z so this right tail probability is bounded above by this exponential and you can take this minus st inside the exponential so we are having this uh, 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 this simply uh, it is an upper bound for this right tail probability but what uh, in chernoff is looking for chernoff is looking for among the right tail bound uh, the best upper bound so best upper bound how we can get it by minimizing this uh, right hand side uh, function with respect to s then we will get uh, best bound so if you minimize this one with respect to s so just differentiate this one this part and equate to zero from there you will see that uh, s equal to uh, n by t it would it would be uh, uh, or t, s equal to t by n it will give a very simple expression that uh, the right tail probability is bounded by exponential of uh, minus uh, t square by 2n so we are getting a practical very practical kind of thing so that is n is talking about uh, that some size that the n number of sample what you are having. sample size you can say that so this and t is talking about how much you are divided uh, from uh, that uh, mean zero zero is the mean here how much you are divided from zero so that uh, that it is talking about so with respect to that so you got it uh, this exponential or explicit uh, upper bound so if you try to look further so if you're taking a very a specific t that like this way you may ask why we are taking this kind of t so we are taking that we suppose uh, we want to say that uh, this right tail probability suppose it would be very small and then in that case if it is very small that quantity say suppose it is delta delta definitely this probability would be very small tail probability always happens to be very small so suppose this one is delta so if you simplify delta small then if you simplify so what would be delta or what is the relation between delta and t so easily you can say that uh, from here it will imply that uh, negative of uh, logarithmic function happens to be inverse of uh, exponential so negative of t square by 2 a it would be equal to log delta log delta and base is here uh, e you can say it like this way now further if you simplify negative sign you can take it like this side so it will imply that uh, t square equal to uh, twice of n times log negative log d delta you can write it then if you take negative log delta it becomes like log of 1 by delta so t square is coming like this way that means how much you are deviated from uh, uh, that uh, mean 0 okay so from here is just i have taken it t is equal to a square root of so this one is this quantity that means you you, you are taking very small probability delta that it would be uh, right tail probability okay so for that uh, how much deviation you will have this much deviation uh, right of or left of uh, origin origin that happens to be mean of the z 
have, you have to so if you are taking this much uh, dbs uh, away from origin or simply you can say it like this way then you will see that uh, <coughs> the probability of sum if you are uh, trying to go away from the origin uh, by this amount then the probability would be less than equal to small delta so that is uh, that uh, churn of going pretty that it say okay so you can see that in the graph this is the uh, mean and if you want or this quantity t that means t you are expressing uh, if you t you are taking twice of n log 1 by delta then you can say that the right hand probability of oh, you can say that this quantity uh, t this quantity then probability that x is greater than equal to t would be bounded over by this delta delta is very small number simply you can say that so if you are uh, easily you can say that uh, uh, bound of right tail probability very small bound of right tail probability simply uh, in alternative fashion what do you what do you want to say you want to say that uh, simply uh, z is of order a square root of n so here a square root of n you can say that uh, so it is uh, with high probability z is uh, within uh, that uh, uh, order of a square root of n it is uh, uh, that means with high probability it is unlikely that it this z would be away from uh, delta away from or t away simply t away from uh, origin it would be t away from origin okay so other thing we will discuss in next class it is already over time